In this video, we'll review the rules for multiplying and dividing with fractions. Just like with uh, multiplying and dividing with integers, the rules for multiplication and division are much simpler than the rules for addition and subtraction. With multiplying and dividing fractions, we do not need the common denominator that you need when you add or subtract. The rules for multiplying with fractions are fairly direct. What we want to do is just multiply all of the numbers in the numerators. So multiply across the top. And then we want to multiply all of the numbers in the denominators. So we want to then multiply across the bottom. That resulting fraction will be our solution. And then you can see, make sure that your answer is simplified or reduced. So for example, in problem number seven, we can do three times one is three, multiplying across the top. And then we can do four times seven, which is 28, by multiplying across the bottom. Uh, then double check to see, are there any numbers that'll go into both three and 28? There are not. So three over 28 would be my final solution. In problem number eight, we can do exactly the same thing. We're multiplying fractions, multiply across the numerator, and then multiply across the denominator. Now in this case, if we do that, notice that we're gonna get two times three is six, and nine times 10 gives me 90. And then I have this new fraction that has six and 90 in it. At this point then, you need to look and think, well, are there any numbers that will go into both the top and the bottom? And in this case, um, I can see that two will go into both of those because they're both even numbers. That gives me three over 45. And then I notice that, oh yeah, three goes into both of those as well. And so I end up with one over 15. And that will be my final solution. Now, when you're multiplying with fractions, something that is really, really helpful for you to notice um, and recognize is that a lot of times we can do our simplifying process before we even do our multiplication. So as long as everything is being multiplied together, if we can find something that will divide anything on the top with anything on the bottom, then we can go ahead and reduce the values before we go. The advantage to this is that we're not going to end up with really big numbers when we multiply, and also a lot of, and also the simplifying will be done. It's usually easier to identify factors here when the numbers are smaller. So let's see what that would look like in this problem, and then we can practice on the next one. In this example, notice that three will go into both three and nine. So I can divide the top by three, which would result in one, and I can divide the bottom by three, 9 divided by 3 will give me 3 as a solution on the bottom. So sometimes we call this canceling. I, I prefer the term reducing common factors. But what I'm doing is just dividing the top and the bottom by something. And it all, it's really important that it's something on top with something on the bottom. So um, in this case, that notice the numbers are much smaller. So that's great. Uh, there's also another set of common factors because 2 will go into both 2 and 10. So I can reduce that right now. If I divide the top by 2, 2 divided by 2 gives me 1. If I divide the bottom by 2, 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. And so now I have a smaller set. Now on the top, all I have is 1s. Definitely nothing that's going to be very useful for me anymore. So now I can go ahead and do my multiplying with fractions. Multiply across the top, 1 times 1 gives me 1. Multiply across the bottom, 3 times 5 gives me 15. So I get exactly the same solution. I'm able to identify those common factors much smaller, and I don't get any really big multiplication values as I try to go through in my, in my work. So again, with multiplication, it's really nice if you can reduce common factors before you go So reduce common factors when possible. And remember, it has to be something on top and something on the bottom. All right, so with that in mind, let's try number nine here. Here I have negative 7 eighths, and I want to multiply this by negative 16 over 64. So in this particular example, again, I'd like to see if there's any common factors that I can reduce first. In this case, notice that 8 will go into both 8 and 16. I like that. So if I divide the, this by 8, I get 8 divided by 8 is 1. And if I divide 16 by 8, 16 divided by 8 is 2. Uh, don't forget about that negative. Sometimes things get a little bit lost there, but it's still part of the problem. Now, the next thing that I notice is I have a 2 on top and 64 on the bottom. 
that we can go ahead and reduce those common factors too. It's fine to be above and below each other. What's important is just that it's something on top with something on the bottom. They don't necessarily have to be diagonal. So in this case, if I divide the top by two, I get one. And if I divide the bottom by two, I get 32. And now I can go ahead and multiply straight across. So on the top, I had a negative seven times negative, the negative from here, negative one. And on the bottom, I had one times 32. Be really careful, and I often will go back to my original problem. Negative times a negative makes a positive, so my final solution to this should be positive. When I multiply seven times one, I get seven. One times 32, and I get 32. And again, my answer ends up being positive because it was a negative times a negative. Uh, double check to see if your answer can be simplified. Seven over 32 is as good as it gets. So that's gonna be my final solution right there. So nice, that's multiplying fractions. When we need to divide fractions, um, fractions already kind of had these little, remember fraction bars and divisions kind of mean the same thing. So dividing with fractions really ends up putting lots of different pieces together. So we actually would like to rewrite um, any division problem that we have as a multiplication problem. And uh, multiplication and division are very related to each other. In fact, they're inverses, kind of like addition and subtraction. So when we're dividing with fractions, what we want to do is to rewrite the division as a multiplication. And then we have to balance the problem because we've changed it. So how do we balance it? What we do is we um, are going to um, multiply by the reciprocal of that second fraction. So we're going to flip the second fraction over. So rewrite the division as multiplication and then multiply by the reciprocal of that second fraction. And then we can just follow our multiplication rules. So how would that look? Here in problem 10, we start out with 1 third. We see divide, and we don't like dividing with fractions, so we change it to times. And then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this next fraction. 2 divided by 3 flips over and becomes 3 divided by 2. So now I have a multiplication problem. So I change the divide to times, flip the second fraction, and I have a new form. And I can use my nice um, multiplication rules. Again, you can multiply straight across the top and the bottom and reduce, or you can reduce along the way. Uh, 3 goes into both the top and the bottom here, so we can divide top and bottom by 3. And I end up with 1 times 1 is 1 on top, 1 times 2 is 2 on the bottom, and my final simplified reduced answer should be 1 half. When we get to problem 11, same deal. We start out with negative 5 sevenths as my first fraction. I change the divide to times, and then I want to flip this second fraction over. So 1 divided by five, or 1 over 5 becomes 5 over 1, and that's my reciprocal. So again, divide to times, flip the second fraction. Now I want to multiply across the top and bottom and see if there's anything I can reduce along the way. I do see fives, but they are not one on top and one on bottom, so I do not get to cancel those at all. Um, I go ahead and multiply straight across the top. Negative 5 times positive 5 gives me a negative 25 and then seven times one gives me a seven on the bottom. Remember that negative just goes with one number. It either needs to go with the top or the bottom. And in this case, since the signs were different, my final solution ends up being negative. You could write this as negative 25 over seven, or you could write the negative out in front of the fraction, and that's fine as well. Both of these are reduced fractions because there's nothing that would go into both 25 and 7. So either of those solutions is fine. If you wanted to change it to a mixed number, that is another option. Uh, it won't be required on this particular assignment for you to do. But again, just so you know how to do it, 7 would go into 25. It goes in evenly three times. That would get me up to 21. And then I'd still have 4 left over to get me up to 25. So that gets me 3 and 4 sevenths. And then don't forget that your solution was negative. So that would be another way of writing exactly the same answer. With problem number 12, here notice that we have negative 4 fifths divided by negative 8. And it's really important anytime that you're doing any fractional operations to go ahead and write everything as a fraction. And if something's not a fraction, we can make it a fraction by writing it over 1. So in this one, we could change that uh, divided by negative 8 to divided by negative 8 over 1. And now we can follow all of our rules. 
So the first thing, we don't like division problems with fractions, so we change them to multiplication problems, and then we keep that problem balanced by flipping that second fraction over. In this case, we're going to have um, the 8 goes on the bottom and the 1 goes up on the top, and that does need to be negative. You can keep the negative with the 8, um, or you can put it out in front. Now we want to do, in this case, negative 4 times 1 would give me a negative 4 on top, 5 times negative 8 would give me a negative 40 on the bottom, and now I can try to reduce this a little bit. Notice here we have a negative divided by a negative, so my final answer should be positive, and that's fine. That's exactly what we expect. We also notice that 4 will go into both the top and the bottom, so we can do a little bit of reducing there, and we can get 1 tenth. So the negative divided by the negative made that positive, and I got 1 tenth there. You could have also done that reducing here. Notice that we could see that 4 goes into both the top and the bottom there. We could change that to 1 over 2, and then we'd still get that 1 tenth as a final solution in that problem.